Uh, da, da, da. I always need to kind of get like in my head, trying to like warm up. You know, like when you work out, just. <clears throat> you gotta stretch. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All right. Uh, I like to go three, two, one, go. Welcome back to the catch up with Brian Simo Smarty, where I meet people and we talk about stuff that are cool to me. Uh, today, I have a special guest, old friend of mine, Ari Hirsch. He is the general manager of Arlington Nutrition Corner. I, I'm, I'm horrible with doing my homework every now and then. Uh, yeah, so Arlington Nutrition Corner. We're in Arlington in Home Shop. Uh, we met through Gold's Gym, we personal did. trainer. Old, old, old home, Gold's Gym, Gold's Gym home, or you just meet everyone. The fitness world is very, not as small. But it's a pretty tight knit community. Yeah, every you, you, very, there's always like uh, you know that game Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, where like you can link like you say an actor, and then you have six connections to link it to Kevin Bacon. Uh, You've never heard of that game? Well, no, no, actually, no. I, I, I actually I've heard that in the military. So like when, the last one I'm in the desert, they always play this game. It's like all right, they name these three actors, and you got to name the movie, or sometimes they name the movie, and you got to name like the actor, and then you the next person has to. Name like a yeah exactly. You try to get it within six tries as close as you can to Kevin Bacon. That's kind of like the same idea with the fitness community. Yeah, you can link everybody if you just dig deep enough. Uh, In terms of who you know, your connections, where you worked. Yeah, you know things like that. I feel like we are all intertwined. I think I heard of another theory. I was talking to another buddy of mine, and he was talking about like the five degrees of something, where like you'll always know someone between five people. No, yeah. I think it's the same concept. Well, it's like like the yeah. the real saying is six degrees of separation. Oh, like, there you go, six degrees. Okay, so but I'm like they, on. you know, six <laughs> degrees of Kevin Bacon is like a a fun game joke. But it maybe was before your time. Maybe yeah. just I'm dating myself right now. You're like a year older than me. Pretty much, I'm like three years older than you. No, you're not. How old are you? I'm 25. I'll be 26 this year. I'll be 29 this year, bro. Really? Yes. I'm getting old. Are you Bobby's age? No. Are you two? No, Miguel. I am. Uh, we were in the same grade. Miguel is... But I'm, I'm like, I was that guy that would always, like, I was oldest in my class. So When's your like, birthday? September 22nd. How, how are you the oldest if you're in September? Because it's a late birthday, so I started school late. My parents, we started late. It was, <laughs> we're getting sidetracked. Anyways, I'm older than you, so I just dated myself. Okay, Whatever. all right, I, I digress, we digress. Um, I guess give me a little more bio into yourself, into how you got here, or after getting the training. Let's just start the training first. You went to school, we MoCo boys, uh, after high school. I went to Maryland. You went to Maryland for? Uh, got a degree in public health. In public health. Yep. And, and you then, were you already had your cert at that time, yeah? Yeah, so I got my personal training certification um, probably my junior year in college. Because oh, wow. it was either, I mean, for my schedule, it was either work at a restaurant, or which I did, and I liked it. Yeah. Or be a personal trainer because it's like a flexible schedule. And, right. you know, I just was coming off of taking me taking uh, anatomy and physiology in school. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, now's the best time. I'm pretty much, like you know, a pro at the human body at this point <laughs> in time. If I don't use I this information. Everything. I know. If I don't use this information now, I'm going to lose it. So I got my personal training certification. Um, like you mentioned, Gold's was my first training job yeah. where I met you. Right. Um, and, you know, I was a trainer there for a couple of years and I kind of branched off and trained privately. Um, okay. I specialize and I guess I technically still have a specialty uh, for senior fitness. Okay. And so I would say 90% of my clientele when I trained privately were all over the age of 65, probably between the age of 65 and 92 were the age groups. Okay. So I would travel to them. We would work out, you know. It was nice training seniors because when you train seniors, mm -hmm. It's all about training for quality of life, right? right? So it's not for training, hey, I want to get a nice beach body in eight weeks, you know, help me with this. They, they, uh, the thing I really like, I think what you're trying to get at is like, uh, they know what they want. Yes. Because I feel like the younger people that, uh, that like I train or just in general, they're like, I just want to look good for girls or I want to yeah. look good for other girls. I want to get toned. Yeah. And they're uh, like, yeah. what does that mean? Yeah, I want to like, lose weight and build muscle. I want to look like that guy or that guy yeah. or like that bodybuilder on Instagram. And I'm yeah. like, um... You know that takes like years, or sometimes they're on steroids. And yeah, 
the stuff that they don't talk about. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, it, <laughs> I, I got a, a new perspective uh, for training when it is for quality of life, right? So I'm, I was training and, you know, making their lives, just their day-to-day -day lives easier. Like yeah. my clients used to tell me, you know, not, hey, I dropped 30 pounds, but hey, like it's easier for me to go up the stairs now. Yeah. You know, when you can make somebody's life easier or better, it's very rewarding. And it was always mm -hmm. very satisfying to me. It was also something where it's like, I worked with some of these people for probably four years plus. Yeah. Um, I think the coolest thing too is like the people that, or the one thing that people like don't really harp on as a personal trainer yeah. is that we have like actual relationships with these people yeah. and they talk to us about stuff. It's just as people. much personal as it is training. Yeah. Like that, like they are literally, if not more personal sometimes than the training. Cause I mean, I worked with guys who could have done the workouts that we did together, but, right. but they wanted that accountability of, yeah. you know, coming to see me or they wanted that little push that you don't get if you're training by yourself. True. You know, true, um, true. so I, I definitely agree with you. It definitely is as much personal as it is training. Yeah, and I think like the more and more people that come up to me, like personally, is like, yeah, I want to be a personal trainer, but then I feel like they don't do it for the right reasons. Yeah, they just feel like, okay, you know how to train yourself, but then you have to you have to learn how to train another, yeah. and at the same time understand the way that you learn how to do something isn't going to work for everybody. Yeah, it's true. I think a lot of people, especially working here, you talk to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. There's some people who like, like think personal training is like a default, like a fallback for a lot of things. Well, I like to work out and, you know, I'm, I'm in good shape, so yeah. I can be a personal trainer. Right. Like, like it's just, it's, it is it's because I'm in shape and because I like to work out, I'm, I'm going to be a successful personal trainer. Yeah. It's not really like that. Like, if you're not passionate about it, right. if you're not passionate about what you do, it's it's tough, and you're not you don't realize how tough it is because you're gonna get people that say no to you. You gotta sell yourself, and yeah. if you don't truly believe that you are the best person for this job yeah. to help somebody achieve their goals, people can see right through that, and True. you're just not gonna be successful. I definitely I we had the same conversation. I just did the podcast with Miguel, and um, we were talking about um, purpose, yeah, purpose over passion. So the thing that I kind of kind of harp on now because I didn't like. When or I'm starting to learn, I don't want to hear follow your passion anymore. Yeah. Because I wrote an article for uh, happiness versus pleasure. And to me, passion is the same thing as a short term goal. Because when you have passion, your passions can change constantly. And then for me, when I talk about versus happiness, we found out the definition of happiness is the yeah. state of happiness, which doesn't really help you define it. But I think when you're in the state, it means you have a longer term. Like it's a yeah. long-term goal. Think long-term more than the short term. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think, you know, uh, we here at the Nutrition Corners, we talk a lot about passion, but we kind of define it differently. Okay. Like for us, passion is not, hey, I want to manage a retail store and I want to, you know, be very successful at that. But, yeah. but our passion is helping people. Like okay. it's not a finite Thing. It's not a, a, a monetary goal. It's yeah. not we want to open 20 stores. It's we just want to help people. So it's more yeah. of like, like you said, like a mindset, mm -hmm. not like um, I want to be the most successful personal trainer out there. But it's right. it's what is what is deeper? Like, why do you want to be that successful mm -hmm. personal trainer? And purpose. Exactly. It's, it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's we, we wow. do. We, you know, it's funny, like working here. Um, we're a bunch of bros. Everybody who works for the Nutrition Corners, we're all bros. And we embrace, <laughs> we embrace the broness, right? Yeah. But with that, we're all, and we, I'm going to use this word, we're all super passionate about helping people. You guys are true to yourselves. We are true to ourselves, yeah. 100%. And so when we are, you know, this is our, our vehicle mm -hmm. to help people. Right. Is to sell them things that we know are going to help them get to where they want to be. Right. And to be honest with you, bro, like before we sell them anything, yeah, we you know you you're gonna come into the nutrition corners and you're like gonna get questionnaire. Yes, you get the nutrition questions. corner. What we call I need to the, know about you <laughs> exactly. What we call the nutrition corner experience. Okay, and that's different. You don't get that when you go into a uh, GNC or vitamin shop or order from bodybuilding.com or whatever. Yeah, we ask you, yo, how how is your training program? What's your diet like? Yeah, and if there are any things that we can help you with in that aspect, right. we're going to help you with first before we sell you any supplements because we'll be the first to say like supplements are not the end all be all right you could get great results without any kind of supplementation they're meant to be supplements exactly they are called supplements doing. to supplement 
a good diet and exercise program. Right. And that's how we market them and that's how we sell them. But if you are somebody who is, you know, crossing all your T's and dotting all your I's, like they'll yeah. make a difference. Okay. They'll make a five to ten percent difference, but if you're somebody who is busting your butt in the gym, two hour workouts, if that's your thing, if you're eating as you should be for whatever your goal is, yeah. like it'll help you in that aspect. And that's how we market and that's how we help. We don't help because dude, take this fat burner, like you're gonna drop forty pounds in two weeks. It's gonna be insane. Like yeah. we just we're, we don't blow smoke up people's butts. <laughs> you know, we don't personally our business model, like we don't make commission on okay. anything that we sell okay. and that is very intentional because we want our main motivator behind what we do what we recommend to sell your experience to sell our experience but also to make sure that that education. we're giving you what we really do truly think is, are going to help you achieve the goals that you stated to us are what you know they are okay like we're not i don't i'm not selling you this because i know i'm going to get a ten dollar kickback on it yeah you know we we're not set up like that. We never. You, you also worked at uh, GNC. Before. I did. I did. I worked at GNC when I was in college, probably my freshman year in college. And did they do that there? Hundred yeah. percent. Okay. You walk into a GNC and they're going to be like, "You should take this pre-workout over that one." Mm -hmm. And their reasoning in their head is because I make five dollars more off of that one than on that one. I don't care what your goal is. Yeah. I know my bottom line is going to be helped by that. You know the reason I quit GNC, and I don't. I doubt anybody uh, <laughs> from GNC corporate would watch this. But the reason I quit was because my manager, I had this woman come in one day and I was by myself. Yeah. And she brought in this big mask gainer. I'm like, this little lady is carrying a mask gainer. This probably can't be good. She comes in <laughs> very, very upset. She said, I was in here two days ago. Yeah. And I was asking the gentleman who was working here, I want a lean protein because I'm really trying to drop weight. <laughs> and apparently he sold her a mask gainer. A high calorie shake. Yeah, uh, that is nowhere near what she needed. Right, and and in fact, it was it was probably the worst thing for yeah. her desired goal. Right, and I was like, like I just can't be in this kind of environment, like where yeah. that's acceptable, you know. And so I quit probably a couple of days later. Mm -hmm. Started working at a restaurant. It's great. <laughs> Restaurants are fun. Free food. It free was free food, food, cool people. It was. I it love was. all that. Yeah, it was a good time. I spent my time, I spent three and a half years in noodles company. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I worked at a couple Italian restaurants. You were more fancy than me. I was. I had to wear, <laughs> I had to wear like a black suit and I got like an apron. It was really cool. I wore jeans and sometimes a polo or maybe a button down. Doing big things. <laughs> I was 18. I was 18. Fair enough. I was, I Fair was enough. Trying to do my own thing to try to get a car, trying to be Mr. Independent. Yeah. Hey, I respect that. Um, right, let me, let me uh, rewind a little bit. Uh, so I want to get into training a little bit. So you had your first cert, NASM? NASM was my first. NASM thing. was your first cert. You got a specialty in senior? Senior fitness senior and fitness. youth exercise. And, okay. So you were like both. Opposite. Both ends of the spectrum. Okay. Um, and you don't train now, client. Currently, clients. no. So no. now your, your, your person, your more personal goals are? physique bodybuilding which will show you have going on in how many weeks 14 weeks 14 will weeks. be my first show yeah uh, it, i'm using the skills that i've acquired through personal training to one help our clients here at the store mm -hmm. um but also to help myself i mean i am working with the coach right. that's doing my diet uh, and stuff like that which has been phenomenal yeah um yeah it's just it's it, it, i sort of shifted gears right so i've always been the type of person to Kind of go with the flow, like okay. like as opportunities presented themselves. Yeah, I jump at the opportunity. Yeah, I always say yes to things that I think I, I sort of should. Okay, um, and that kind of happened here. Like like I started off like my association with the store. Yeah, was a customer first. Like I was a customer here for years. Oh, I would really? drive from Silver Spring, Maryland, to come Arlington here? just to come to the store because you got an experience you never you couldn't get at another store really yeah so, so this is where like your starting point where you kind of learn more about supplementation and what's good for you and i've always been very with. interested in supplements um okay just I, you know I, I my mom took me to the gym when i was 12 mm -hmm. so i've been off and on training since i was 12 years old i was a fat kid growing up okay but i really love the gym because it was something that like i stuck with for a while and i started seeing changes and kind of got hooked on seeing those changes so can you give me like a brief description of your, your fat story I remember, I remember this now. I completely forgot. So you were like, what? How, what was your highest weight? 
So I was like 200 pounds, but this was like in like fifth or sixth grade. So I was a chubster. Like, was that 10 years old? I was like 12 or 13. 12, 12, thir 12 13. It was probably how my, tall were you? Mm, five, six, maybe? Five, six, 200 pounds. 200 around pounds. 200 pounds. I mean, when I weighed myself, I might have been more, but. Gotcha. I was a chubster. And then how long do you think it took from fifth or 12, 13, 200 pounds to. Or you started going to the gym at that same time. Yeah, I mean, my, my parents uh, were the best. Like, they, they, basically their way of dealing with my obesity was not to, like, restrict my food, but, but just make me active. Right. So, I, they so were just sedentary, kind of yeah. playing video games all the time. And, but they out. encouraged me to play every sport. So, I played soccer, I played basketball, I played football. Um, and then my mom was into lifting at the time. She had a personal okay. trainer, and she was like, hey, why don't you come lift with me one day? And so we went, and it was fun, and it was hooked ever since. The ball started rolling. Yeah. Okay. I always I want to keep my little tidbit that I've literally learned from reading books. Um, the 80-20 principle. You yeah. Know that? I know the 80-20 principle. Yeah. So I used to use that with my clients all the time. Really? Yeah. Okay. And it's so funny to me because like, I feel like it's like the fundamental in terms of learning a mindset to doing something successful. It is. I mean, I agree with you. I think too many people start off, you know, it has to be 100% or nothing. Right. I have to go to the gym seven times a week or I'm not going to go at all. Okay. But it, to be successful is to take baby steps and, and mm -hmm. to practice 80-20. So 80% of the time you do what you need to do. 20% yeah. of the time you enjoy yourself. And that's, you know, in uh, regards to, is that a different 80-20 than you? No. Well, yeah. It's so I'm different. talking like diet-wise. Like I okay. used to help my clients with their diet and we would always start off with the 80-20. So 80% okay. of the time, whether that's 80% of your week, 80% yeah. of your day, 80% right. of your month. It yeah. doesn't matter as long as you have some kind of structure. Mm -hmm. And they were often very successful. I mean, yes, you know, after a while you have to adapt and you have to change some things. But like right. starting off, it was a very easy um, structure to adhere to because mm -hmm. it, it took a lot of pressure off people. People put too yeah. much pressure on themselves like, oh, God, I got to eat chicken and broccoli and that's it. Yeah, you start overthinking and then it's analysis or paralysis by analysis type of thing. Exactly. Exactly. So Oh, let me, I'll give you my, my personal viewpoint of, as of right now because it's like fresh in my brain. So I read the book, uh, The 80-20 Principle by uh, Richard Cooch. And what I got out of it was 80% is good enough. That's how what I got. So because like you said, if people shoot for 100%, they start overthinking. Yeah. Then they start getting like paralysis basically. Yeah. And um, what I got from the 80-20, or the breakdown of the 80-20 80% of success is was made from basically 20%. 20% of the work you actually do was basically the little research and taking action. By taking that little research and action, you will achieve that 80% because you just started. It's better than nothing. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that 100%. Um, damn, I definitely forgot where I was going with that. But that was just like the first start of getting into... It's kind of like exactly what you did. You just you went with your mom. Started training. And Built that 20% base and, and then we took off. And, yeah. you know, it, it got me hooked. And so I became obsessed with doing research on how can I, you know, continue the progress when it came to diet and, and training programs. And Let's talk about research real quick. Okay. How, what did you do from there? Did you use your mom's trainer or did you just kind of Google? That's a good question. Um, it was a long time ago. <laughs> um, I think I didn't use a trainer starting off. I had a couple of trainers growing up, but like... Starting off, it was listening to my mom. She gave me like some sound advice. Sound advice that she got from her trainer, mm -hmm. and I came up with like a structure to a workout plan. Yeah. Um, probably wasn't as efficient as it probably should have been, but it was something. It was that twenty percent exactly. There you go. Um, but then I became obsessed with like watching like you know videos online about how to lift and different lifts and uh, reading fitness magazines. Like let's I would, do quick idols real quick. All right. Do you have any idols that you like looked up to like that? back then i followed a lot of bodybuilders back then just because yeah. you know they were that like extreme of like you know that 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 long-term goal that i wanted um any ones in particular i don't know i mean i always liked jay cutler okay i always thought Classic. he had a cool physique yeah. just he was a monster but like yeah. i don't know that i ever want to get to that level in terms of musculature but i appreciate and i i I like the work that I know he did to get to where he was. And mm -hmm. I always appreciated that aspect of his physique. Okay. That like, it, it, you know, you don't get like that overnight. Right. You know, you don't get like that without hard work and proper diet and stuff like that. He said so. that? Or 
It's no, but I mean, better. in general, like you, you just don't. Ah, uh, okay. You know, you gotta. I mean, yes, probably probably use some drugs, but like the yeah. drugs don't do everything for you. Right. You still gotta bust your butt. Okay. Yeah. For so. me, I was more. I was looking at as athletes. Like I love uh, Steve Smith. Steve Smith was a big idol of mine. Um, I know it was a, it was a running back. Uh, Ladinian Thompson. I would always follow football workouts. Yeah. And tr- that's because I was I, I was running back as well. Um, and I think in 2014, that's when I got into powerlifting. And the people that I really watched was like the online coach. Yeah. The online, I like I really watched YouTube, the online coach, and. I think that really helped me a lot to find learn about the conjugate method was uh, Masthetics. Yeah. Garrett, Garrett, and, and Simon. Simon. I, I'm thinking about that last name. Simon Ontario. Garrett, G- Garrett Gonzalez. Yeah, I just watched one like hour and a half long video on YouTube about their uh, conjugate method, and then boom, I was hooked. Yeah, I think it's about finding something. You know, you. I was probably more on the bodybuilding side. Like I like the aesthetics aspect of the physique sort of sports mm-hmm. where you were more about the strength and I was more about the results to be honest yeah like, well, I but like but be... by results you're looking for like better lifts and stuff like that like I didn't care how much I lift as long as I looked a certain way or I, my goal was always to to look a certain way not mm-hmm. to like you know I want to improve my bench or I want to improve my squat or my dead like it that was never I mean to this day it really isn't a a true goal of mine. Yes, I want to be strong because yeah. it's cool to be strong. <laughs> but like, it's the trend right now. Yeah, exactly. And also, my girlfriend's strong, early. so I got to keep up. You yeah, know? I got to hold my own. I got to make sure she doesn't get stronger than me. <laughs> which is, which is a scary thing, and and it might happen in relationship worlds. Yeah, you okay. don't want your girlfriend. I mean, I'm proud of her. She busts her butt, and <laughs> I want her to be strong. But I always want to be just a little bit stronger. I, I want to talk about that. Uh, the relationship aspect of it, like, because I also re- I've been reading a lot of books lately. Um, books are good. Uh, have you heard of The Mask of Masculinity by Lewis House? I think I've heard of it. Yeah, break it down for me though. Um, he breaks it down so that most men have nine, or there's like you can break men down into nine masks that we all have because as a man we have to like be the caretaker, the uh, the breadwinner. We and I think. If I can bring it off the top of my head, I think it's like the stoic mass, where we think that nothing faces us. The athlete mass, this prove that um, if we're a good athlete, we're a good guy. Yeah. Like as a as an athlete, you're solid. Um, I know there is the know it all, self explanatory. Yeah, you think you know it all. Uh, the alpha mass, where you think there's only black and white, winners and losers. There's no yeah. gray. Um, that's four. The sexual mask, where it's all about uh, how many your conquests, how many women you've been with, and there's a the Joker mask where you make uh, light of anything. Or well, I think that's kind of normal though. Yeah, you kind of deflect certain things. You kind of make light of certain situations yeah. because of it. And I don't know the other three off the top of my head. But it's basically that, and I think that what I want to get out of that is that same concept in the in terms of relationship. I believe in then a certain balance, which I'm going to relate, relate to another book that I read from uh, Ryan Holiday, which is uh, "Ego is the Enemy." Yeah, he he uh, put in that <clears throat> a little bit a piece of Aristotle, or he put in a piece of Alexander the Great. He didn't listen to one of uh, Aristotle's rules, which was, was one of his mentors was uh, to find the golden mean, to find the balance between things. Yeah. And I believe everyone has their own balance, yeah. mean of things, of doing things. And uh, I believe in, like, in, I like to hear different perspectives, especially like relationships, yeah. because everyone's relationship is different from another. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, bro, like, I think lifting has been, I used to be a very self-conscious person. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously growing up overweight, like, I was made fun of a lot growing up. I was teased. And so that made me very... Um, I always felt like I had to wear different masks to yeah. kind of hide who I was and stuff like that because, you know, at the time who I was, I wasn't very confident in it. But lifting mm-hmm. um, helped me with that a lot. And, yeah. and to be real with you, bro, like, in my relationship now with Julia, like, she is hella strong. Yeah. And I love it. And I've told her that a million times. Like, she can squat 325. She can bench 200. 
Uh, she can deadlift 365. She could probably do 370. Okay. <laughs> um, and, I mean, yes, I am stronger than her in most of those lifts. But, like, if she did get stronger than me, I'd be totally cool with that. But she weighs definitely less than you. Like, uh, to kilo. Yeah, I mean, she. I do weigh more than her, for yeah. sure. So, like, pound for pound, she might be stronger than pound you. Pound for pound, she, no, no, no. Pound for pound, she <laughs> for is sure? stronger than me. Okay. That is confirmed. All right. I, um, I mean, I'm going to be real with you, too. Like, she's the breadwinner. If you're going to compare <laughs> salaries, she makes more than me. Oh, okay. I'm totally cool with that. Like, yeah. I'm not self-conscious about that. Like, I'm following a passion of mine. She's supporting that passion. And, yeah. You know, she has a, a great job. And, and, you know, I'm all for, you know, her being as successful as possible. And, yeah. like, I don't feel like I need to make more i don't need to provide i mean i like to provide and i do but you still have to lift more than her i know i do <laughs> but I, and i do i do i can that's cool that's cool I, my, my best i bench 315 <laughs> i can probably squat probably not anymore because i'm hungry all the time <laughs> but i can squat like 345 um okay. my squat has never been very good i'm very awkwardly built for squats i've realized that you have long legs i have long legs but Short more importantly bike. i have like long fucking like uh, the tibia. Yeah, my tibia Tibias. and fib fibula, tibia, fibia, tibia. Uh, femur. No, femur's up here, bro. Yeah, if you no, have I'm long talking femur, about long. Uh, that's, uh, that's the tibia, but then the femur. If you have long, femur I thought you had well, two down there. That kind of. There's two. Well, I mean, if they're two, they're not really. My my under the knee region <laughs> is very long, and it makes it very awkward to squat. Um, okay. But again, like my goals have never been strength related, but. Oh, wow. It's cool, and and honestly, if she squatted four hundred five and and deadlifted five hundred, th that that'd be awesome, and I'd be super supportive. Like I don't need to be the. I like to think of myself as an alpha. Yeah. In most situations. Yeah. But it's not something that has to. It's like I don't need to define myself as that to like make myself feel good. Right. Like I can be alpha when I need to be alpha, yeah. but I don't have to be alpha to make myself feel better. It's kind of like you said here, like you're just comfortable with yourself. And yeah, you I'm understand. comfortable with myself. I'm, and you know, it's kind of interesting, like like being in prep, dieting mm -hmm. down, like I'm I'm using this prep for for a couple different reasons. One to yeah. build a healthy relationship with food, and I know that sounds kind of weird because yes, I'm, I'm slowly starving myself. Does. Uh, and you're, you, you would say, how is that creating a healthy relationship? But like, I would always obsess over food. Growing yeah. up, I've always obsessed over food. I mean, I can tell you, my mom's told me stories of like growing up, we would have breakfast and I would ask what's for lunch. We're having lunch and I'm asking what's for dinner. And uh, food is always something that's, a, that's been on my mind. Yeah. And so being in this prep, it, it's, it's, it's putting food as an afterthought, right? So now I'm just eating for a purpose. For energy. Yes, or... I'm eating for sustenance. Yeah. I'm eating what my coach tells me to eat. Uh, and I'm not eating for pleasure. I mean, yes, my food I'm eating, it does taste good. Yeah. But it's not, I'm not eating pizza and donuts, which taste extremely good. And to be honest, I'm not missing that. Like, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to not craving things like that. And so, you know, I, I used to, we can curse on this, right? Yeah. Well, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so, me and Julia used to have days where I, I joke with her that I got a bad case of the fuck it's. Fuck it's? The fuck it's. Okay. Where you're just like, fuck it, dude. I'm going to eat whatever the fuck I want. Okay. And so you all day, I'm going to eat pizza, I'm going to eat a box of donuts, I'm going to eat, you know, whatever I want. But there was, there was no holds barred. It was just, fuck it, I'm going to eat everything. Okay. So we used to joke and call it the case of the fuck it. Oh. And so I'm hoping that, you know, through this prep, I'm not going to get that. If I want a donut, I can have one donut. I don't need 12. Yeah. If I, I want a pizza. Exactly. And it's, it's sort balance. of switching that mindset. Okay. You know, there's a time where, yes, I'll go out and I'll eat probably too much sushi. But, like, that's not every time I eat sushi. Right. You know what I mean? And it's not like eating sushi every day. Exactly. You keep things in check. Yeah. And, and you know, we're using, we as a culture, we use food a lot as, a, like, a social interaction, right? Yeah. You know, you go out with people. Yeah, you so either go drinks, out for dinner, dinner. You go out to yeah. drinks. You know, you, we use it as a social catalyst. Mm -hmm. And I still want to do that, but I don't want food to be the main focus. Like, I want to enjoy the company I'm with, not yeah. the food that I'm eating. You know right. what I mean? Like it, it's been cool. Like, I went out last night with Julia, my uncle, and his <coughs> girlfriend. And it was awesome because, like, I wasn't focused on what I ordered. I ordered chicken and a salad. Like, yeah. it was boring. But I really enjoyed the conversations I had. And um, I enjoyed my time being out in a different environment and uh, things like that. So it's cool that like I'm slowly starting to see what I wanted to happen kind of yeah. come to fruition and, and, and making that mental shift. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna give you two, two little quick stories. Okay. Well, not really quick stories, just little anecdotes. 
<clears throat> um, in, in the military, we always have this thing like, hey, look at my hand. How many fucks do I give? And it's like, there's nothing, there's nothing there. there. Exactly. I don't give any fucks about doing whatever work. Yeah. I mean, that, that's that. Um, but the other part is like, for me on the single side, I, I feel the same way. Like, to, I mean, I think I've, I love food. Like, I think I'm personally a foodie. I like to experiment, uh, experiment with food, like yeah. different cultures, stuff like that, and see what I like. But I do still see food as more as like for sustenance, for energy to supply my day because that's how I stay fit. Yeah. Because I could easily go through like a tub of ice cream and donuts and same day and be fine. I would feel like shit the next day. Yeah. But then that's kind of my um, stimulus to be like, I don't want to eat that anymore because you I don't want to feel like shit. Yeah. And um, I think the thing I was getting with that was, I was going to say, because I'm single, I have to look for reasons to go out on dates. And then no- normally it is, let's go out, grab drinks, let's go uh, grab dinner. Not really dinner, because I just, I don't know. That's, this is a different story. But <clears throat> I've, I've learned to find different places, like yeah. <clears throat> uh, bubble tea. Most yeah. bubble tea places have like little games, board games. Yeah. Like Jenga's my little go-to. Or, um, That's a good idea. If I were to go to D.C., there's a place called The Boardroom. Yeah. Where you literally just play board games there. That's awesome. I mean, but you can't get beer or drinks. There's a bar there. So you can have like, a couple of drinks and chill, hang out, meet some good people. Yeah. Uh, and pool. Pool has been a, a vice of mine lately as well. Pool's fun. Like I'll play, I'll play pool or I'll pay to play pool. Yeah. But that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's more going out for the social yeah. interaction versus just going out for pool, food, yeah. games, stuff like that. Yeah. Girls. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, man. Um, you okay. That aside, uh, back to the store. Yep. You're the GM. Sorry. How long have you been here now? So I'm coming up on a year as a manager here. Okay. Um, I started as an associate mm-hmm. uh, January 2nd, 2017. Uh, I, I became the manager when an opportunity presented itself. Yeah. Um, I think it was April, so we're coming up on a year pretty fast. I'm pretty okay. sure it was the first week in April. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. And it's been a, it's been an awesome year, man. I'm not gonna lie. Like, uh, dude, it all started. I was training. I was you know loving it. I came in one day, and uh, the manager at the time, Pat, who's one of my best friends now, yeah, and Doug, the owner, they were here just chilling. Yeah. Um, and they asked me, they were like, "Hey, like, have you thought about working here?" Well, we started this talking. We were just visiting. Yeah, this is when I was like, shopping. Like shopping yeah. And then me and Doug started talking. And, like we lived in the same apartment complex in Silver Spring. Well, not at the same time, but like we just started talking. And yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. And then you know, since then, I mean, I, it started slow. And uh, it actually, I mean, I was only an associate for a couple months. And mm-hmm. then Pat got an opportunity to um, open to, up another store. Well, no. Or so, so a little side aside. Uh, Doug Miller is owner of the Nutrition Corners. Mm-hmm. He also owns Core Nutritionals, which is a brand. Okay. And Merca Labs, which is another brand. So he owns two brands. Okay. Pat got the opportunity to become the national sales director for Core and subsequently Merca, but that came later. Yeah. So he got that position, and then it left a void here in Arlington that I was going to fill, and I did. Ah, um, I see. And so that's how it sort of worked out here. But it's been it's been a whirlwind of a year, and it's, it's been great. I mean, it's you know at the end of the day, like we were talking about earlier, like my my passion has always been helping people, right? Whether that's in personal training or actually, we, we, I skipped something. I w- worked in corporate wellness for about a year. That's right. I so I did that. that, or whether it's in corporate wellness or it's here at the store. Like mm-hmm. I'm still helping people and so that's like, what I like. What specifically have you done with the store to do your like social outreach for so, health and fitness? Oh, so it's it's interesting. Like working here, you know, you think hey, you just sell supplements all day and then that's it. Mm-hmm. We do a lot more than just sell supplements here. At least as a manager manager's role. We do right. a lot of community outreach. So we build relationships with local gyms local nutrition, you know, diet coaches or, or uh, and things like that, powerlifting gyms, CrossFit gyms. Can you talk about the specifics? Like what place have you gone like recently? Yeah, like, for sure. So like groups? we we have a great relationship with a local diet coach slash now he's really getting into um, uh, like, like clothing. Okay. Uh, but he still does a lot of diet stuff and we work with all of his clients. So they're called Skulls and Barbells. 
Oh, okay. His name's Ryan Blakely. He's the owner. Okay. He's actually my coach now for my show. Ah. Uh, but I love Ryan, and, and we've had great success together in terms of him uh, working with his athletes. So his athletes okay. get discounts at our store. Uh, um, and he, we take care of Ryan, obviously. Um, I know, damn, what's his name? I know a couple from Miguel. Uh, Adam. Thomas. Adam Thomas and Laura. Le- Le- Laura Legend. Yes. So Le- Adam Legend. used to work with Ryan. He was one of his coaches, but okay. they no longer work together. Oh. They're still cool. Yeah. Like everything's copacetic. Adam's an IFBB pro now. Right. Uh, Laura, I think, is a local trainer. Yeah. Um, we love them too. I take care of uh, his clients as well. They come here yeah. consistently. Uh, I mean, I see Adam fairly regularly, but I take care of his clients, and I, he gets a discount here, and so does Laura. Oh. Um, and so we, that's what we do. We want to build relationships. We are we are not in the supplement business. We're in the relationship business. Okay. Whether that's you know we don't call people who walk in here customers. Mm-hmm. We call them clients. Okay. And it was, it's a good mindset from coming from personal training because yeah. a client is somebody that you're working with, somebody that you're invested in. Right. Okay. And so we get invested into the people that shop with us. Yeah. We're not just, hey, bro, you're the dude who buys your protein every three weeks. Here you go. Out yeah. the door. No, I'm going to learn your name. I'm going to try my damnedest to learn your name. I'm going to ask you how that protein was. I'm going to ask you, you know, how your lifts are if your goal is lifting or how the show was or how far out are you. I'm going to get to know you. And that that's the mindset that we all have here at the Nutrition Corner. Building a community. Right? Yes, we want to build a community because we know we are nothing without our clients. Okay. okay. And so that's our that's our main motivation. It's not not the bottom line. Yes, we're in sales and, and we do care about that, but but that's secondary. We know that will come with the relationships that we build. I see. Okay. Yeah, and so we work with a lot of local gyms. I mean, you know, I'm in the Arlington area, so I work obviously a lot more with gyms in Arlington. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of local gyms. We work with a gym uh, called Body Mass, which is a local uh, class. They do classes, but they also like do one on one. E60 Fitness is another one we do. I've heard of that. E60 is pretty cool. They have a location here in Arlington, and then they have a location in Ashburn. Are they the Eats people? You're thinking of Easy Eats? Uh, it's, it's an acronym or something. E-A-T-S. No, so they're just a local gym. Okay. Um, but they do really well. We do a lot of business with Orange Theory. We love Orange Theory and I everybody... Orange Theory a lot. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Orange Theory is great. It's, mm-hmm. It gives structure. It gives community. Mm-hmm. And so there are like... Com- competition. I yeah. like the competition. Part. And there are like five gyms in the Arlington mm-hmm. area and we love them all. And we, we help out all their clients and I talk to a lot of their coaches. Um... And, and we just try to build relationships, whether that's yeah. with gyms or with clients who come in. Okay. We're in the relationship business. Uh, how about we get into supplement stacks? Okay. Or like... Let's, just, let's get into supplements. Yeah, let's get into supplements. So you, let's, let's, let's start with you. Okay. You are competing for... Are you doing bodybuilding? Physique? I'm doing physique. Okay, so you're doing a physique show. Yeah. What do you personally take? What do I take? Maybe it'd be easier to list things I don't take. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I've um, heard that too. I take, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I'm listening to my coach. <clears throat> I'm taking what he's telling me to take, and it will evolve, and it does. Do you often ask him, like, why am I taking this? Like, uh, I, you know, I, trust the process? I don't. I generally know why he recommends certain things. Oh, okay. Because I work here. Right. But I would imagine most of his other clients who aren't. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to call myself an expert, but... Being, being, I want to say your perspective. I just want to hear your perspective. Working in supplementation, I know generally why I'm taking certain things. And so, I mean, I take a protein powder post workout, I take a multivitamin. So, this is a regular like whey? I do whey isolate. Okay. Which is, uh, it's probably the highest quality type of protein out there. Okay. It's, it's lowest in fat, lowest in carb, highest in protein, absorbed extremely fast, which is ideal post workout. What are the, different types of whey that you have here? Uh, we have a couple of different types of protein. So we have whey isolate, mm-hmm. we have whey concentrate, okay. we have casein, which isn't whey, but it's derived from the same process. From the egg, right? Uh, it's from or cheese. Cheese, okay. Yeah. yeah, so when you're making cheese, <clears throat> um, the process of filtering out sort of the hard um, cheese curd, okay. it uh, uh, like foam comes up to the top, and right. that's actually the protein. And so 80% of that is your whey, and 20% of that is casein. 
And oh. so you, you isolate that, you separate it, yeah. and then you powderize it, flavor it, put it into a tub. That's a protein powder. Okay. Um, casein is a slower absorbing protein. So I take that as my last meal of the day. I'll do 40 grams of casein. I just mix a shake or I'll make like a, a protein sludge. Mm -hmm. That's like a protein pudding. Um, well, and then, I take that before bed. Just uh, like yogurt, Greek yogurt? No, I do that by itself. I do, so do water. You, really? Mix it up. But then how do you make it, uh, you said... You just do less water. Uh, so it's like you you, you, you don't pour... Nah, no, dude. Really? Casein is a very um, a very dense protein. So it like fluffs up. Yeah. Like if you have a, a casein shake in a shaker cup and you let it sit there, it's going to freaking get like, not solid, but it's going to like get super firm oh, and, like, and like milky. Okay. Um, but so that's what I do. I take a <laughs> multivitamin. I take a probiotic. Explain that. I don't. I don't personally know what probiotics do. Okay. So I love probiotics. I mean, this is probably ninety nine percent of people should be taking probiotics. It cleans out your digestive system. Is what I know. So n or probiotics are healthy gut bacteria. Okay. And so that healthy gut bacteria ensures that you know the 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 gut bacteria that's in there is thriving mm -hmm. and your your digestion's on point. Uh, most people don't know this, but your immune system lives in your digestive system. Okay. And so the better digestion you have, the better your immune system is. Okay. So it helps with the immune system. It also helps reduce water weight because your body will not hold on to excess water if your digestion is on point. Okay. Um, and basically, it's, it's categorized as prebiotic fiber. Okay. Meaning that, that basically it's food for your healthy, the healthy bacteria in there. Okay. Um, so it helps... Tighten it up. It's not fiber in the sense of like you need to schedule it because it can make you go to the bathroom. Right. But it, it helps you to become regular. It helps your body to become regular. You hit um, homeostasis. Yes. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Back in biology class. Yeah, exactly. Stuff. Exactly. So I love probiotics. I mean, I... I Is it also found in yogurt, right? Yes. No? Yeah. Yeah. It's so. found in anything. It's found in yogurt and most things that are fermented. So like... Kimchi has probiotics. Pickles have probiotics. Oh. Sauerkraut is abundant in probiotics. And well, uh, I'm thinking kimchi and pickles is cucumber soaked in vinegar. Yes. Basically, that's but also, made. but the, the process is is called fermentation. That's how you get the pickles or the cucumbers to turn into pickles. It sucks out the. It sucks out. You know, I don't, I don't I'm not an expert in the fermentation, fermentation process, yeah. uh, but I know it is <laughs> fermentation. Okay, got gotcha. um, I'm going to start breaking down, because all I know, it's pickles or cucumbers, cucumbers in vinegar for yes. long periods of time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but all of those are great sources of natural probiotics. I don't eat a lot of dairy, because I'm kind of sensitive to it. Okay. I can be. Um, so I choose to get it from just a, a probiotic supplement. It's just easier for me that way. Really? Okay. I take vitamin C. For immune system? Yep, I take oh. ubiquinol, which is good for your heart. What does that do? Uh, it is, I mean, generally, it just helps with heart health. Um, it's a strong antioxidant. In terms of like, so in terms of for you, does it just... For me, I think it's just, I mean, I'm taking it, yeah, cardiovascular health. I'm putting my body under stress, and so I want my heart to be nice and healthy. How often do you do like cardio type of stuff? So right now, I am doing 35 minutes of HIT. About four days a week. What way of hit? Like I the way I do it, I do intervals. So I'll either do a minute on, a minute off on stairs. So a minute going as hard as I can, mm -hmm. and then a minute just kind of catching my breath, and then yeah. I'll repeat. Uh, or I'll do it on the elliptical where I'll go a minute as hard as I can, just yeah. freaking trying to raise my heart rate as high as possible. Yeah. And then a minute relaxing, uh, and then the other two days a week because I have one rest day, uh, I do twelve minutes with the battle ropes. Okay. Or I've been non subbing in nonstop. Uh, I do one minute on, one minute off for eight minutes, so 16 minutes total. Or okay. I'll do, if I don't do the battle ropes or somebody's using it or whatever and I'm pressed for time, I'll do the rower. Okay. Same concept, minute on, minute off. Yeah. Something to raise my heart rate, right? So hit, the idea is that you want your heart rate to get nice and elevated mm -hmm. and then bring it back down and repeat. Do you not like running? I don't like running. Oh. I used to run a lot, but my knees aren't the best. Interesting. Yeah, not a big fan of running. I've been I've been talking to a lot of runners. I have a, a physical therapist that I work with. Is he a runner? He is a runner. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of physical therapists I found are runners or have an affinity to run. 
I, I don't think I like I don't personally have an affinity to run, but then for me it's like oh it's like meditation to me. Like I can just like zone out. Yeah, zone out. I don't have to worry about my phone. I just listen to the music that's in my ear and I just like See vibe. for me when I do cardio, I like to watch TVs or movies on my phone. And so running, you're like bouncing and I'm gonna get myself dizzy. So. Oh. I do so, that regularly because I, I do. guess I have an office job. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's my, my real way of like watching TV these days is to catch up on it. I have Hulu, so I'll watch yeah. like shows on my phone. Gotcha. Or HBO, so I'll watch a movie. That makes sense now. See, why like most fitness people like to go steady uh, state. to the cardio. Yeah, because they can just watch stuff. Dude, it's awesome. You like distract <laughs> yourself for the duration of your cardio. Yeah. It's great. That makes sense. So if you like listen to my podcast for an hour... <laughs> you could. You could listen to the podcast for an hour and, and cover all those bases. Yeah. Boom. How long do you do you, do you steady state cardio? Or do you, do you I don't do it very do often. I'm it? only doing steady state right now as like a warm up or a cool down. So I'll usually do five minutes warming up when I first get to the gym. Okay. Um, and then I'll do about ten to fifteen minutes after my hit just to kind of cool down. I'm not doing. I mean, I'm walking on the treadmill at like. 2.8 with like a three or four percent incline so i'm like not just like like walking walking i'm kind of working but yeah. i'm also bringing my heart rate down because if i hopped off and got in the shower after a hit i'd just be a sweaty mess and it wouldn't cool down very fast so i use it as a way to cool down oh okay yeah. i see i see um so is, was there are there more so you did the uh, probiotic i take creatine way creatine i take a pre-workout because i'm tired in the morning and I only train in the morning. Well, I don't only train, but I'm I prefer. I love working out in the morning. I love the training in the morning, and I train fasted. So I don't eat before I train. How how much of a difference do you feel that does to you? So for me, I notice, one, I, I have to train. I wake up at 5.30. I'm usually at the gym by like 6.30. Okay. Um, and I don't want to wake up, eat food, and then go to the gym like 30 minutes later. All right. that food just going to be in my stomach. Yeah. And it's taking blood away from what could go into my muscles. Mm -hmm. So I don't have enough time to fully digest, relax, then go. Right. So I train fasted. But I do intra-workout carbs. Uh, and I do... It's um It's highly branched cyclic dextrin. So it absorbs very fast. Okay. Like very, very fast. So that, I sip that on that supplement. during my workout. It is a supplement. It's, it's not like a regular... It's amino. not a whole food source. No, it's not a meal. I wouldn't... No, like amino. Like oh, PCA. so I, I add... Actually, my coach has me taking essential amino acids as opposed to branch chain amino acids. Ooh. Tell yeah. me more. I have no clue about that. That's new to me. So EAAs or essential amino acids are basically all of the aminos that mm -hmm. you need to take in from your diet that your body does not produce on its own. So okay. so protein, let's break it down. Protein breaks down into 20 different amino acids. Okay. Make a complete protein. Okay. A couple of them are, are your branch chains. Mm -hmm. A couple more are essential. And that just means that you need to consume them in your diet. There's been a lot of studies that have come out recently that are saying for protein synthesis and, and to further prevent muscle breakdown, yeah. essential amino acids are a bit superior to just your branch chains. Mm, but you show me that. branch chains are, are part of essential. So isoleucine, leucine, and valine, which are your branch chain amino acids, okay. they, comp they are part or are components of essential amino acids. Okay. So like I'm taking, more. yeah, it's a little bit more complete in, uh, in terms of the full amino spectrum. Okay. So I'm taking those. I add extra citrulline to my intra workout shake. What does that do to you? Citrulline uh, is abundant in watermelon, uh, but it helps to increase blood flow. So it helps with vasodilation. Oh. So it opens up my blood vessels as I'm training. Yeah. Uh, Getting you a better pump. You know what I'm saying? Wait, I should do the LRM. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. T talks about that. He has a vaso... Dilator? Yeah. Except that man doesn't know 99% about what he's talking about. Probably. He yeah. just... Uh, Blackstone Labs. Does he still push Blackstone? Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, and then I, I'll add more agmatine sulfate and then some salt into my intra workout shake. Please, go more into salt. I, I, I hate this misconception that we should eliminate salt from our diet. No, it's dude, it's essential. it is an essential mineral. Like, right. you will die if you don't consume salt. Yeah. I mean, yes, generally the American diet, we probably take in more. Salt. So you should be conscious. Yeah. But you shouldn't eliminate it from your diet. I mean, right. I put salt on all the food I eat. 
So I'm, I'm in prep. I don't watch my sodium. I only watch it go down my face because I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. I don't count it. I love fries. I add salty extra fries. salt to my intra workout shake mm -hmm. because it helps basically suck up a lot of that water into my muscle cells. Mm -hmm. It helps further the muscle pump. And when people say muscle pump, it's basically blood engorging whatever muscle you're working. Yeah. Um, so you feel fuller. You feel fuller, but you're also causing more breakdown. And and the process of, of muscle or of getting blood into your muscle tissue is you're taking out waste and you're bringing in good nutrients. Okay. So it's it's all they're all very conducive to building muscle. Okay. Yeah, because I feel the same thing. I learned that in the military actually. Yeah. Because whenever I'm in the field, like I'm in the desert, I'm very hot temperatures. In order for you to not uh, be heat casualty, we just pour salt packets into our water yeah because we just need it like we need to maintain that well water. you're sweating water, you're sweating, sweating out, out a lot of sodium a lot of salt and so you need to replenish that right so i agree i think salt is um a very underutilized uh it's not a supplement but a, a underutilized mineral that a lot of people just categorize as bad because that's what you hear it's a myth yeah i think it's a huge myth in the in the western culture yes agreed uh agreed yeah, you know, I've been in six years. I've seen many guys get the silver bullet where the, the, our corpsman has to put like a silver thermometer up in someone's ass to get them back They up. call it the silver bullet? Yeah. That, that does not sound pleasant. <laughs> it, it, oh, I've never done it, so I can't really say. But yeah, look, looking from other guys, it's not the greatest. Yeah. Like, I don't know how that happens. Like, I mean, I've been times where I've been like dazed. Yeah. But that's just because it was stupid hot weather. Yeah. But other than that, like, I've been... Pretty solid. Yeah. I've just been lucky to say I'm pretty solid. I mean, you're probably smarter than most about trying to stay nourished, yeah. you know, hydrated. I mean, you're conscious of what that stuff does to your body, where some people maybe who aren't as educated in, in health and fitness mm -hmm. don't have that appreciation for what water and food are, are going to do for you. Right. So, it makes sense. Uh, let's get into, well, do uh, you have more? So, break it down. You have... Uh, whey isolate, creatine, essential amino, amino acids. acids. I take intra workout carbs. Probiotic. Probiotic. Multivitamin. What kind of multivitamin do you take? So I take uh, once a days are better than none a days. But right. I take one that you have to take twice a day. Okay. Because you can't absorb 100% of your daily vitamins in one pill in one sitting. You uh, end up peeing out a lot of it. Right. But that being said, if, if you're somebody who you don't take pills well or it's hard to sort of routinize taking pills multiple times a day yeah. and you can only take it once it's way better than not taking them right but i think of multivitamins as like an assurance policy yeah like because i know i'm not gonna eat all my exactly my i don't i mean generally i don't vitamins. have a a wide variety of greens and fruit in my diet Are i tend to eat the same well? thing i'm low on iron i, I don't think i'm low on iron i eat a lot of well, i don't eat a lot of red meat but i eat a decent amount oh i love red meat I love red meat too, but I just don't intake it as much. I eat spinach pretty regularly, uh, and that has a lot of iron. And almonds have a lot of iron. Oh. And I eat almonds all the time. That's usually one of my sources of healthy fat. I definitely want to get into diet after we finish this list. We can do that. We can do so, that. So, six. Or do you take more? <laughs> I, I just imagine you with like a Ziploc bag with just like... A I, I, I have a lot of pills. But right now, it's very simple. Like, I'm normally on a natural test booster, which I'm a big fan of. Okay. I'm not on right now because it's not prescribed to me yet. Gotcha. Um, so uh, generally, that that's what I'm taking right now. Okay. Just that. All right. Well, uh, I still have questions about that, but let's get into diet. Or, okay. Yeah, diet, nutrition type of things. Sure. What What works best for you? I'm on the viewpoint every diet works. It's just what works best for you and yeah. your lifestyle. Yeah. So for me, what I'm doing now is something that I haven't really, I mean, I've known about for a long time, but haven't really like done personally in car, it's carb cycling. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've never done that as well. So the way it's structured right now is I have high days, medium days, and low days. Okay. And in a, in a week, what's, how many times high, how many low? Right? So right now I have two high days. Mm -hmm. I have four medium days and one low. How often does that change? Like every month? Or? Well, I check in with my coach every week. Um, and it's up to him if it changes that week. If he likes kind of the progress that I'm making, he'll hold steady. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's really up to him. So I started off with like three high days and now I'm down to two. Okay. Um, 
but it's, it's really his discretion in terms of what he feels like my body needs. I mean, I'm 14 weeks out, so I have you know, a wow. decent amount of time. Right. So I'm not like, I'm not starving by yeah. any means. Uh, but I have to be very conscious about what I eat. And I kind of like it because like high days are great because I ha do have an abundance of carbs and I feel good. Mm -hmm. Low days kind of suck because I don't have very many carbs. <laughs> but I have healthy fat. So like, you know, I'll eat more peanut butter that day than... You know, I'll get my energy from fat sources rather than carbohydrates for that day. So, so are you, like you say, we're more like it's a macro plan slash. What so I'm doing more cases? macro. It's more macro oriented in the sense of I can pick the types of food. So like I don't mm -hmm. like chicken breast, so I don't eat chicken. Uh -huh. I but I do a lot of ground turkey or I'll do fish. Okay. Um. But I, I'm generally. I mean, he gives me a list of foods that he would recommend I eat, right. and I stick to them. So it's like brown rice. I do a lot of English muffins, which have been my saving grace. Yeah. Um, as my post workout carb. Um, big into cauliflower rice. It's delicious. How's that? What is that? So it's it's cauliflower that cauliflower is like rice. like oh, like rice. It's not rice. It's cauliflower that you like grind up into um, like the shape of rice. So it's like you're eating rice, but it's just cauliflower. Okay. So that's been helping me. It's like look, tricking your body. That. Dude. That's new to me. It's it's awesome. You should get into it. Does it come like rice? Like you kind of just make it like rice and put Bro, it in Bro, open pot? the freezer. Sorry, we're in my office. I have some packs of cauliflower rice in there. Oh, let me unmike myself real quick. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Hold tight. It's going to be worth it if you don't know what cauliflower rice is. This? Yeah. So cauliflower rice. No, I'm not sponsored by Green Giant. But if, <laughs> if Green Giant is watching... I use this all the time. Sponsor the podcast. So look, it's it's basically just cauliflower that they grind into the shape of rice. And so there's only per serving four grams of carbs, two grams of protein, zero grams of fat. So How I'll mix this. Do you have this with a meal? Pretty much every day. Okay. Like I'll or this this meal? pack will be like two meals for me. Okay. So I'll split this between two meals. I'll have like five ounces of meat with this. Yeah. Some hot sauce. Ooh. What? Another another <laughs> dieting pro tip. Ready for this. Garlic salt is the truth. It makes everything taste better. Well, I, 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 I personally like garlic. So garlic, garlic salt. salt. I've never had the, the it, it will change your life. Really? All right. I'm Try it. On record, so I'll, it will I'll change your life. Later. So I'll add garlic salt to give it some flavor. And then I'll eat it. What, what uh, hot sauce are you? <laughs> I'm a basic bitty. Sriracha. I'm the rooster sauce all okay. day. I like it hot, but I don't want it to like. I don't want it to stay with me when I'm done eating hot, mm. you know, or stay with me after I'm letting it out hot. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like it burning in. I don't want it burning out. I feel you. you know I feel I mean? you. Like sometimes I'm a I'm a buffalo, buffalo yeah. sauce. I like yeah. buffalo, but I have to be the mood for yeah. buffalo. Yeah, same. And same. if I am, it's. But if I'm not, I'm not feeling it. Like I was a big Frank's guy for a long time, and I think I franked okay. myself out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really like Franks anymore. Do you, what do you believe in other condiments? Like any like low, low sugar, ketchup, barbecue sauce? I think sauce. everything in moderation. Um, I've been using, so this prep so far, I've been using low sugar, ketchup, or reduced sugar. There's like five calories per serve. And I'll yeah. just do, if I use it, I'll do maybe like two servings. So it's 10 calories. Mm -hmm. At this stage, it's not making or breaking anything. Yeah. I, I would use Walden Farms, which is a calorie-free condiment. What's what sauce? Or? Uh, pancake syrup. If yeah. I make protein pancakes, okay. Their dressings are disgusting, so I don't use those. Yeah, I've only used their their, their syrups are the truth. Mm, chocolate sometimes. Chocolate's pretty good too. Their caramel it's, sauce. It's just, I, I, whenever I just feel, I, I crave the real thing. Yeah, I know it's, it's not the same. It's not the same, but like if you can't <laughs> have the something. original, or you can't have the real thing, it it helps to satisfy the craving. This is why I don't compete. <laughs> it's very mentally tough and like I'm, the, I'm letting you know like like, like going rest. out last night it could have been very easy for me to order just the fucking a uh, burger and fries and i would have been happy yeah but i got a chicken salad and it's just it it, it does it, it it is as much physical as it is mental yeah i mean i remember when i was competing in uh powerlifting for me to hit so 66 kilos which is 145 and a half pounds I I was on on point for yeah. like a month prior out, and yeah. like I walk around now probably like one sixty. Yeah. So for me, I'm one eighty five right now. 
but then what do you what's your goal for so i'll probably get down to if i had a guess and i don't know because it's my first show probably 165 maybe 160 maybe even the high 150s i have no idea again i don't really care how much i weigh i just care about how i look right but I think that goes hand in hand when it comes to physique. And, it does. So. It does. And again, it's, it's, I'm doing it's just purely aesthetics. I'm going for the look, bro. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. Uh, do you believe in anything else? Any other nutrition schemes, systems? I mean, like you said, everything works if you can find what works for you and you can stick to it. That's, mm-hmm. Consistency is key. And that's, right. that's, I mean, that's anything in life. Consistency is key. That's true. Is don't, don't, hey, I'm going to go keto for two weeks and then I'm going to stop. Or I'm going to, you know, I think keto can be great if you stick to it, if it adheres to your lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you can't stick to it, you can't adhere to the rules, like it's just not for you. Yeah. So find something that works for you. I mean, it's easy for me because I have a coach that I'm paying. And because of that too, it's like, it's that all their accountability. Like right. I'm paying money for this. And yeah. so. I want to get my money's worth. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I do with what he says. It's kind of nice in that regard too. I kind of like. You can like. I sit thinking. back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not. Nice. I don't overthink things. I do what he says. I let him worry about. Hey, should I reduce carbs? Should I add carbs? Should I adjust your protein or your fat intake? I just do what you say, bro. That's yeah. why I'm paying you. I, I I like that. I want to I want to see your your perspective on this. It's like the importance of paying for education. Yes. Because like you, like you, I think you and I both know that we think a lot. Yes. We're, we're the type of people just to stay in control. But it's nice not to think all the time. It if is. If I'm someone, if I'll pay you, I'll, I'll definitely pay for you to think for me. Yes. Shit. Tell me what to do. Yeah. As long as you're good and you give me my results, golden. Yeah, and that's so how I, I feel now. Things. It's like I'm not overanalyzing is what I'm doing. You know, I'm, I'm plateaued for two days. Do I switch something up? No, I sit back and I let Ryan decide what to do. Yeah. And, so you, you can know, focus on the store, focus yeah. on more outreach. Exactly. And focus, community. yes. And so it's, it, takes a, it definitely takes something off of my plate okay. in terms of that. So I, like I have that. a great relationship with Ryan. I mean, he's an awesome guy. He comes by the store all the time. He's a local to Arlington, so it's very easy for him to do so. Okay. okay. Um, so we have a good relationship. We have a good coach-client relationship, and we have a good friend relationship. Yeah. We co-hosted an event last year, which we called the Fit Fam Summer Jam. Ooh. It was like a big fitness event, and we're going to probably work on round two this year. I would love to be a part of this. You should be a part of it. Okay. Well, we'll definitely, I'll give you some more details, and I'll give you guys some more details, too. Can you not talk about it now? I can. I mean, it's just basically, it was a fitness-centered event. So we did it at a CrossFit gym, yeah. where we had different workouts. I brought different samples and product. I didn't sell, but I gave free samples, tons of samples. Mm-hmm. Ryan brought a lot of his apparel. We got massage therapists there. We got um, tanning people there. We got a meal prep company there to cater. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a good time. We all had we worked with local uh, PD and fire department. They brought wow. a fire truck and they were like letting people do relays with like their um, equipment. I mean, it was fun. We all had a good time. Ooh. So, what gym did you guys go out of? So last year we worked with CrossFit South Arlington. Okay. This year, I think we're going to work with a different gym, uh, oh. Potomac, and um, I don't know. Anything. Why am Top I blinking? Uh, Patriot CrossFit down in Arlington. Okay, Check but good out. people. Uh, it's actually a new thing that we're working with. I'm going to one of their. Uh, they call it a throwdown workout on the 22nd of this month, which um, is March. March. Okay. I'll um, this up by then. Yeah. So. Cool. Uh, just on the on the on the subject of CrossFit, what do you? I'd I like to hear perspectives. Well, bro, I just got a <laughs> pair of uh, Reebok Nano CrossFit shoes, and I love them. I, I yeah, I deadlift mine too. Yeah, just for powerlifting. Honestly, we I mean, physique bodybuilding makes fun of CrossFit all the time, but yeah. honestly, at least from my perspective, it's all love. As long as you're doing something that you're happy with, and you're exercising and moving and healthy, yeah, we're all for it. I think CrossFit gets a bad reputation because. Some people think, and I think now it's becoming more of a misconception, is that you know they preach movements that you that are not meant to be repetitious, to be repetitious, and yeah. that can cause injury. Yeah. But now a lot of a lot of CrossFit studios, at least in my experience, have great coaches mm-hmm. um, that are teaching proper form, and it's not about how quickly can I hurt myself; it's about how quickly can I improve myself. So I love CrossFit. I mean, it's not something that I do. Yeah. But I appreciate it, and I appreciate people who are into it. Okay. Um, 
I had a feeling you'll say something like that because I feel the same way. I like CrossFit. I mean, as long as people are enjoying themselves and they're active, I'm all for it. I just have a hard time defending. I don't care if you like jazzercise, bro. If you can jazzercise and lose weight and you're happy. I'm curious about water size. What's water size? Like, you, you've seen that? Like, you, it's like you're in a pool with like, I don't know. Are you dancing? Maybe. I don't know. I, I, I saw, I always saw like stuff on videos. Maybe it was like old school stuff, but it's like those like. Jazzercise is pretty old school stuff. Yeah? I think it is. I haven't, I haven't heard of, I haven't heard of Jazzercise. It's like, a, oh. like you're walking and you're like dancing type of thing. Like, uh, oh, I, I definitely just saw a meme about this. It was uh, John Travolta in an old movie. It probably was. And he was like thrusting. Yes, it's probably like, like that. Staring. It's like that. Eyes of the teacher. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about it. Uh, whatever form of exercise you do, all about it. As long as you're happy. Okay, okay. So, uh, Is there anything else, nutrition-wise, that you want to speak about specifically, about the store? Um, well, I just, I, I'd like to talk about the stores a little bit more, maybe uh, about our history. Sure. So if you are not familiar with the Nutrition Corners, mm-hmm. we are, as of now, a Virginia-based, locally owned and operated supplement store. We are owned by one guy. His name is Doug Miller. He is a natural pro bodybuilder mm-hmm. and the biggest bro of all of us. Uh, he also owns Core Nutritionals and Merck Labs, which are two Merck. supplement companies that we do carry. We don't market them as our house brands, but we are owned by the same guy. A lot of people associate us with Core and Merca, yeah. and we're totally cool with that because honestly, they're probably the highest quality products on the market. They okay. don't use any artificial colors or flavors, don't use any proprietary blends. They're very scientifically based. Uh, all the food-based supplements are all whole food-based. So, like, yeah. there's a really great meal replacement powder that's, you know, their carb source is not dextrose or something like that, which is a very cheap carb. It comes from oat flour and barley flour. Okay. So it's very high quality. Um, but we carry hundreds of different brands in here. A lot of brands that you will not find at larger supplement stores, we are big into Primeval Labs. is a big company we work Jerry with. Jerry Ward. Yep, uh, Jerry Ward used to be with them. He's not with them anymore. Oh, I thought he's he was starting his own brand. Bio Lab. No, uh, it's gifted or, or um, I can't remember what it stands for. But he's starting his own brand. Okay. Uh, First Form. We do a lot of business with. Uh, Andy. Frisilla. Who is the freaking man? I just learned about him. Yeah, Andy Frisilla is awesome. Did he you, come around here? Uh, we haven't. I mean, Doug and Carl, who Carl is our GM. He they flow out. Flew out to St. Louis and met Andy. Okay. Um, we met Brian, who's a cool guy. He's their sort of sales director. He came down to talk to us. Okay. Uh, but if you guys want a cool podcast besides this podcast, which you should subscribe to if you're not, is the MF CEO Project, which, which is Andy's, the motherfucking CEO project. Oh. But Andy Frisilla, very inspirational, very business-oriented. So if you want to be successful in any endeavor, not just business, you should listen to it. Okay. I love it. Sweet. Um, we do a lot of business with Evagen, Evagen Nutrition. Which I've heard of Hani Rambod know. is a, is the developer. He basically is a trainer to Jeremy Buendia, who is Mr. Olympia in physique. He just uh, got hurt, though, didn't he? he? Yeah, he had surgery on his chest, but he's he, fine. He had pectoral. Okay. He trains The Rock, uh, so he, he trains some pretty cool people. But needless to say, we carry quality supplements. We're not about... Uh, margins or trying to make as much money as we can because to be real with you we could carry the brands that they have at vitamin shop or gnc and make a lot more money per unit Mm -mm. but we're not about that we are about giving you guys quality stuff so we have nine stores in virginia right now we are opening our first maryland location uh in bethesda right on wisconsin avenue hopefully sometime in may so we're very excited about that that will be store number 10 that'd be cool uh, we do have a short-term goal of opening 20 stores. This year? No. Oh. God, no. That'd be insane. Yeah. Carl's already bald, but if you could, if there was a step past being bald, he that would make Carl pass that. Just lose your skin. Yeah, it would like his brain. skin would melt off of his head <laughs> and his brain would just be exposed. It's pretty, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but he, we are nothing without Carl. He is, he is the literal backbone of the Nutrition Corner. He's our general manager. So he oversees all the stores. Okay. Like, I run Arlington, but he runs all of us. Gotcha. Um, We're just, we're growing, and we're all about, like I sort of mentioned earlier on, about relationships. We want to help you guys. We're not, 
hey dude, buy this protein, I hope you like it. We're like, no bro, this protein is gonna help you achieve the goal that you told me that you're working towards and that I wanna hear about how well it's going because I'm that confident in it. So, you know, we don't sell you BS. And like me and Brian mentioned earlier, like we're not, you know, we're about results. We want you guys to get results because we know if you guys get results, you're gonna, you know, continue to shop with us and you're gonna be happy with the service that you get, so. We're all about that. Um, what else about us? We're all a bunch of bros. We're not all competitors. Um, we're a big family. We're a big bunch of goofballs. Yeah. We have a manager's meeting pretty much once a month where all of the managers from every store, Carl and Doug, and most more times than not, Pat, will all meet, talk shop. We well, At least this time, we're all going to train together and then go out to dinner together. That's what we do. Just come by the store, meet these guys in person to experience it. That's you should. You, you need to experience what we call the Nutrition Corners experience. What's the address of this place? So in Arlington, this is Arlington. 820 North Pollard Street. We are retail number three. Uh, but if you are familiar with the Arlington area or the Boston area in particular, we're right across the street from the Gold's Gym on Wilson. We've been here for eight years. Ooh, we do a lot of really cool demos with like different fitness athletes so we've had ronnie coleman here we've had rich froning here we've had jose raymond yes. here yep we recently had seth ferosi here bodybuilders if you're not familiar i just know those two um and so we're looking to do more with different athletes and try to bring cool people to you so you know stay tuned you should follow us on instagram i'm one of the parties that are in charge of the nutrition corners instagram page so you'll see funny videos i dub myself sir points a lot because in my videos i i point a lot you can shout that out like, what's your i don't IG, know why ig name or so IG my name? personal ig is at ari underscore anc underscore strength yeah but i'm sure if brian's good with his editing he'll like put it on the screen yeah i'll, I'll even try to make it more difficult he'll put it right here huh? Huh? maybe I don't know. It probably just, in the middle or in the bottom. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> but majority of the time it's going to be probably audio. Yeah, I don't. I don't tweet, so don't follow me on Twitter. I don't even know what my handle is. No tweeter. But follow at the Nutrition Corners. <sighs> it's very simple. At the Nutrition Corners on Instagram and Facebook. You'll see my pretty face a lot. I'll be on there a lot. He likes to um, talk on the stories. I do. I talk a lot. I. I mean a lot. I think he just took over at least like 10 minutes. I'm pretty sure 90% <laughs> of this podcast is just me talking. And you're welcome. Uh, but also, we're going to start doing supplement reviews. So we're going to break down different products that we sell. We're going to do reviews on them, what they're going to do for you, how they taste if they have a taste. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously that we sell them and what price we're going to sell them for. Yeah. But we wholesale price. We price match. We price match Amazon Prime. So mm -hmm. we want to be your go-to supplement store. Not because we want your business, but because we want to help you guys. And we know if you give us that opportunity, you're going to love it. I like it. Okay. Uh, I like two questions I would like to ask. Okay. Uh, I, I think I forgot the second one already. Well, then we're down to one. But what are you, what are you currently curious about? Like in general? In general. Like it doesn't have to be about fitness. Um, I, like, I like to hear this introspective talk well, too. I wonder if Elon Musk will be the first guy to take us to Mars. Really? Yeah, that's I was wondering about that earlier. Yeah? Yeah. He sent a Tesla up in space, but I don't know how that's doing. Yeah, I'm like, he sent a car. Yeah. Like, what, what else am I curious about? Um, I want to teach my dog how to roll over. Curious about that. Isn't that an easy thing? You would I think so. A dog, so. Apparently, it's not very easy for a lot of dogs. Some dogs, maybe easy. it's easy for, but okay. uh, we have a dog. Her name's Gloria. What kind of dog? She's a black, well, she basically is a black German Shepherd. Okay. But she's a German Shepherd Lab slash Staffordshire Terrier mix. What? She's a beautiful. She's a beautiful girl. <laughs> <laughs> she's sweet, but she's very smart. And I think because she's so smart, she's like, I'm not about to roll over for you. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. I see. I see. And I'll leave it at that. All I right. forgot everything else. Well, uh, that works. If you want to support the podcast, you can shop for some apparel at simoliftapparel.com and I just opened up a Patreon account so patreon.com forward slash the catch up and until next time deuces